Millions of people living their lives. People we pass in the street and barely even notice. But in those crowds are ordinary men and women with extraordinary stories to tell. Stories of heroism and hope, of beating the odds and blazing a trail. Those moments of chance that change lives forever. In this series, I'll be traveling across the country, coming face to face with people you may never have met, but whose experiences you'll never forget. These are Welsh lives. The only constant in our world is change. Like the rhythm of the seasons, change affects us all. And we all deal with it differently. Because life is complicated. It's challenging. And things don't always go our way. But sometimes it's only when we hit rock bottom that we find our true calling. David Wilson from Haverford West has turned darkness into light. He stared death in the face, but has emerged as one of Wales's finest photographers. His dramatic images reveal the stark beauty of Wales, but they also reflect a man whose life is a balance of light and shade. David has weathered many storms, but he still looks to the sun. David, it's a cold winter day. It's on chilly. The... <laughs> it's chilly, yeah. It's freezing on the Rosalie Hills. What would bring you out here? Um, I must be mad. Uh, no, I've come out here because I love it. Um, I love this. It's, it's the landscape, it's the light, it's the stories, it's, it's just everything, really. I tend to look in my photography for buildings because I think buildings perhaps lend an image a sense of, a, sense of a story, a bit of narrative, and then the people who look at the images, I hope that they might ask themselves questions about who would live in such a landscape. And let's be honest, they'd have to be quite mad, wouldn't they? <laughs> this is a bit chilly. Yes, it's extreme. Yeah. How easy is it you find coming out here, like actually coming out here? Because I'm, even now I'm kind of struggling and just, you know, how do you manage? I manage because my limitations, whatever they may be, I don't see them. I don't notice them because it's my normality. Everybody has periods in their life where things seem a bit bleak mm -hmm. uh, and you just have to hope that you can dig your way out of it, really. Um, and just as I'm saying that, the sun's coming out. I know, it's how all, lovely is that? It's almost biblical. <laughs> how did your interest in photography start? It started when I was 17. Um, I bought a motorbike, mm -hmm. bad idea. I bought a camera, which was a good idea. So I used to ride around Pembrokeshire taking snaps. Um, I kind of had an ordnance survey map and I just began to explore my surroundings really, because as a child I'd never seen an awful lot of it. You said the motorbike was a bad idea. The motorbike was a very bad idea. Um, I think I probably fancied myself as a West Wales answer to Evil Knievel. And I came off and I very badly damaged myself. Um, and it was not good. How badly damaged? Um, I, <clears throat> I broke, in layman's parlance, I broke my neck. 
and it later transpired that I'd broken my back as well and a few other bits. Um, yeah, it, it was bad. It was as bad as it can be whilst still breathing, I suppose. Um, it doesn't get much worse than... Well, it doesn't get much worse than lying on a pavement, not able to move anything except your mouth. I haven't been on this spot since February the 16th, 1984. I was coming down Barn Street on my motorbike and I swerved to avoid a car which pulled across in front of me and I came off. Life after that just became much harder. How old were you? I was 18. Up until about 10 years after my accident, I was a different person. Um, I was much darker. Um, I had a lot of issues. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't come to terms with it. But the photography was there and the photography helped me to feel a sense of achievement. Um, like I was doing something constructive and positive and life-affirming and just buoying me up and making me feel like I wasn't useless. With something like a broken spine, how are you walking today? I was lucky. Um, it sounds horrifically cliched, but the big toe of my right foot moved and I shouted for the nurses to come and look, and they confirmed that my toe had moved. Mm -hmm. But it's quite difficult to be on a ward, a specialist ward full of people who have had similar accidents, who aren't recovering of course. function, mm -hmm. and you're the guy that's moving bits. And that's why I consider myself to be a very lucky person, because most of the people I was in the ward with weren't as lucky and some of them were extraordinarily unlucky. Um, so that always stays with me. I can still... <clears throat> I can... Um, I can still see their faces. And... Um, yeah. David still lives with the injuries he sustained all those years ago. But his wife, Anna, has been beside him every step of the way. In later years, it's become more difficult as, as you get older these sort of injuries um, do make themselves um, known in, I suppose, more, more physical ways. So um, it can be quite tricky sometimes now. But he's got tremendous perseverance and determination and he wasn't going <laughs> to, he wasn't going to not take photographs anymore. Both as a, as a man and as an artist, as a photographer, how do you feel about him? Um, well, he's my best friend. He's my best friend, you know, and I wouldn't be without him. And it's been, there's been, you know, a couple of periods where I worried about not being with him. And, um, but yeah, they were tough. They were tough. So he's done really well. And when I see him coming back, um, you know, after a really good job, it's been really, maybe quite difficult. And he's shown me his photographs and they're really fantastic and he's proud of them and I can see they're good. Um, that's a really good day. David's atmospheric photographs have earned him widespread acclaim. It's a combination of talent and sheer tenacity. A true photographer is a true artist, and I think David is there, and he ranks amongst the best, and he is growing, 
and growing. And I think that, you know, I hope David can take all that he gives uh, to an audience much wider than Wales as well. I think he should be an inspiration in many ways because of the difficulties that he's faced and risen above those challenges, really. And what's within him? However it has been driven, be it through unfortunate circumstances or a specialness previously not discovered, I think uh, David certainly has that, and he can take it higher and higher. David and Anna, all these years, all the ups and the downs, as a couple, what makes you click? We just, it sounds really simple, but we just get on really well, and we obviously adore one another. And yeah, we, um, yeah, we've been through a lot, and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, we got our boys, and for me, it's just great. It's perfect. Um, I'm a lucky man. Coming up, the pioneering scientist changing lives and fighting prejudice. Discrimination has had a huge impact on my life. <laughs>